All right, guys, so we're officially recording. This is just the Q&A. Uh, already did rants, already did tutorials. This is our chance to answer your questions. This is our chance to kind of give you guys a little bit of a coaching session, a little bit public, so we won't give away everything, man, but we gotta give you guys some good info. And Joe, are you here? <laughs> Joe might be lurking in the background. If he is, I'll bring on Joe or somebody. Claudio. Where are you, sunshine? I know Joe's in here, dude. He, he's a thief in the night, dude. He's a, he's a silent assassin. He's silent but deadly. <laughs> he just he just sidelines his way in, man. He just like, what's, what's that? Um, there's a word for it. Like, siphles? No, no, no. It's um, side one. No, I'm trying to think of that word, but Joe just literally teleports in like a teleport candle, man. Well, here's what we'll do, guys. So I will break down a little bit of my thought process this morning while we wait for Joe if he is coming on. Otherwise, I can bring someone else on. So let's go through these one by one. Uh, one sec. This morning, this morning, this morning, this morning, the key levels for each of these and what we were talking about. So remember what I talked about in the beginning of this. Today, we had a stock called SIOX. It ramped up in the morning. And actually, dude, here's what it did. Here's what it did. Put in a really nice top, man, and put in some really nice overhead. For anybody that is interested, I'll, I'll redraw all this. So let's go, let's go like one step at a time, right? So one sec. Let's go one step at a time. So this is what I was thinking come the open, right? We had, and I got to like remind myself. So uh, we had, in fact, let me put this on a separate screen guys to my left so I can talk about all of them at once because I'm only on a laptop right now and this is just going to help me see everything better. All right, so I can see all to my left the main three runners and remember what my thought process was, but check this out. We had SIOX in the morning, we had AEMD and we had NVCN. This was broken down, dude. This was broken down, so check this out. Remember how this is, remember I said that one webinar, I said there's only one time in history I use Fibonacci retracements. There's only one time. And I think it's this one. I use it only one time, dude. And here's why. Look at where the stock's opening. You don't have to use this for anything other than to figure out where the 50% line is, right? Look at this 50%. So let's just draw a 50% line. This is the only time I use this bullshit. Otherwise, it's a stupid ass indicator, dude. So stupid. I just want to know a percentage. That line now is 50% of the move. This stock is down 50% of the move it made. It's cut in half. It's a sandwich without the freaking bread. It's an Oreo without the one side, dude. You have to understand what that means. All of these longs are underwater. Bruh, that's overhead. What do you think these are, these are longs that want out of their positions. So here's what I said this morning. I said, if you go back and read the commentary time stamped, I, I don't want to do that because that'll be a lot of work. Um, here's what I said. I said, it's trading way under VWAP. I said, VWAP to the next outer line is going to be your guide. Here was the outer line for me. I keep it simple every single day, guys. Why was this the outer line? Sometimes I'm not exact to the cent, maybe a 430 line. I wear the tops. I talk about this every single week, man. There's like a top right here, like the formula of base. If this is like almost a mini top. This is, where are the tops, bro? These are resistance points. There's a lot of resistance right there. And we can just, look, if you want to make it even, we can. We'll just say the 430 line. Up to the 430 line, you have tons of overhead resistance and a little bit of a ceiling right here in this general area. So when this careens up, after it's been trading way under VWAP, and it opens, what do you think is going to happen? It's probably going to fail within this. I call these scale zones, right? Every single day, I'm looking at what the two outer lines are and the scale zones. This was it. This was it. Next, let's talk about AEMD, which was the hot chick on the day. What is a hot chick? I'm trying not to give too much information, but I'm also trying to give you guys a little quick lesson. Um, for the look, dude, if you want everything, you got to join MIC, man. <laughs> and then we teach this shit all, all fucking day, every single day. So it's, it's tough, man. I'm trying to teach you guys, but I'm also trying to make it like, you don't have to just freaking tune in these webinars every week to learn trading, man. That's ridiculous. So, but I will say, I'm just giving you my thought process. This morning was a hot chick until boom, that is the kiss of death. What did it do? Nothing since the kiss of death. 
This is the only setup in existence I chase, the only setup. I will throw a little bit of size down here and I will add up to the halfway mark of a, of a death candle and I will set my risk right there. So hold on, I'll show you. This is where my stop out point is. This is it. But I will scale the death candle and I will scale up to about the halfway mark. If this breaks, you're an idiot if you hold on to it. At least, at least I'll say it like this. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be nicer. You're an idiot if you hold on to 100% of your position. If this were to break, if you're not cutting 50% of your position to see if it stuffs to add back the 50%, you're crazy. You're a dude, you are crazy. You must, if this breaks and makes a, a high over pre-market high a day, you have to cut half. I cut full, dude, because here's what happens. I am not stressed anymore. And then if this breaks, and here's what it does, right? Here's what it does. I'll draw it. This breaks right here. I stop out and then immediately stuffs. Guess what? I'm getting in right here, most of the size that I had, because you know why? That was a massive tell that dude, after a death candle, they almost never break. If it did and it failed in a huge stuff and specifically at the 350 mark, whole and half dollar number, I'm getting in on a pop. And so, this is like the one random example, I will go over 30% over VWAP, but on a general speaking scale and what is teachable, guys, if it's over VWAP, use only 30% of your size. Just trust me. Just trust me, man. Unless you're a veteran, you can negotiate those numbers a little bit. But dude, even James would tell you, man, he's been doing it for two years. It's one of the best things we teach at MIC is use 30% of your size over VWAP, dude. Very, very, very rare circumstances where you want to do anything to the contrary. Um, okay, so that's that. So when this put this in, this was no longer the hot chicken anymore, dude. This was not front side. This was the kiss of death. Uh, and then lastly, one sec, one sec, Jay, I'll answer your question. Just give, just give me one sec on the last one, buddy. Um, NVCN, nothing, nothing, nothing for me. This was so beaten down again. This is the only time I use this stupid ass indicator just for a percentage on where the stock is opening up. That's it. So if you guys want to see it's 25% of its range, right? So like you can ballpark it. You don't have to be exact to the science, but dude, think about this. Think about this. I've done this in other webinars. Say you draw a line from where it opens to right here. Bro, that's 30% at max of the size. That means you are trying to make technically this by risking technically this. Because here's what happens. If a pumper comes in here, dude, this, this thing is flatlined. I never hit shit like this. It's just not worth it, man. I always feel like I'm making this to risk this. Not like you would hold, obviously, from 110 to 2. You wouldn't do, or at least a trader who's, you know, had some experience wouldn't do that. But here's the thing. It's a feeling of comfort. There is so much less downside, what feels like, to potential upside risk. I don't like these trades. It's too beaten down. Yes, I said it. A stock can be too beaten down. This was one of those instances. This is an avoid for me. Unless, unless, and I'll redraw. And I'm going a little quick here, so try to keep up. I will give it the outer tops. If it somehow got a wind, if it somehow got a pumper, that's what I would want on something like this because it's got no meat on the bone. And here's what I would want. I'm not hitting front side on this, not like I'm doing on AEMD. If you remember, I'm waiting for orders to get up here. I'm not scaling the same on NDCN. You know why? Because on something this broken down, if it has the potential to get to 150, brother, it may have the potential to get to wait for the break to these resistance levels. Wait for the massive stuff. Why can't you just hit a bounce right here and write it down? This is the move I want, not this. This is the safety move. I want it to reach these major levels of resistance and I want it to fail. Dude, James is the king of this, man. I see him do this a lot. Dude, shout out my boy, James. I see James do this every freaking day, man. He, he really got good at this, man. Dude, some days you just don't want to hit the, the um, outer lines exactly where the outer lines is. Wait for outer lines and then wait for a confirmation to get in on the confirmation, dude. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible for you guys. As you guys can see, man, this is not super complex. You know what it is? It's disciplined. It's disciplined. It's, 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 it's rudimentary, dude. It's, 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 it's regime. Like it's, it's so unbelievably clear on what you have to do. You have to sit on your hands until you get an ideal entry. It's as simple as that. Welcome to trading.
So if you don't have the kind of discipline, you're going to have to learn, you know, <laughs> you're going to have to learn how to get discipline. <laughs> I don't know how better to say it, man. Um, let's go back to Jay Kalini. What would you describe the MIC process is in a few sentences? Are there setups one should take trades to, to hone in for, on for beginners? Jay, I'm going to say it as clearly as I can, buddy. The MIC process is line to line base hits that add up to a grand slam either by the end of the day or by the end of the week or by the end of the month and you have a really good month. What I mean by line by line, we can use SIOX as an example today. What I'm talking about, yeah, and risk management, of course. I mean, every single trade, guys, this goes without saying. In fact, it shouldn't go without saying, but it does. You better have a hard stop on every single trade you, you take. If you don't have a hard stop, brother, it doesn't matter what process you have, you are in risk of getting destroyed. That's what up, bro. Oh, shit. All right. Sorry, I'm late, dude. I was getting the kids some lunch and then the baby started crying. So, bro, I understand, man. <laughs> oh, right, carry bro? on. Carry on. So, let me just finish this, this really quick thing. Um, and honestly, actually, Joe, I would love to hear your kind of feedback on this as well, man, maybe from like a big camp standpoint. So, when it comes to line by line, guys, we are waiting for I, our ideal lines. It's not chasing. It's not FOMO trades. You wait for your line. If this is your line and this is your next line, because these are somewhat close together, <laughs> James, I'm going to scale both these lines. Here's the other thing. If the next line was here, just say for the sake of the argument, the line was here, you scale line to line. You scale here. If it breaks, you cut and you re-attack in an outer line. And then you cover on washes. We are focused at MIC on the best entries possible to get our base hits day in and day out. Like I said, James is a perfect candidate and a perfect role model for all this because he implements this every day. He's not using 20 billion shares to make $1 a day. He's maybe using 2000 shares and he gets 20 cents a day on three, four different names. And that's the way you make a killing in trading. We teach this at MIC, dude, exactly. Oh, dude, exactly. Dude, James, that's perfect. Bro, started off with probably a feeler up near a daily resistant line. Once he saw this top out, he hit it again, and then he played around what's called playing a core. I can already see it. Covered a little is bit. Is that a long? Wash it. <laughs> Did he long that? He, oh, that is a long. Oh, shit. I, I miss. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Atta boy. Dude, I completely miss saw Man, that. look at him. I mean, look at him coming around. Now, yeah. now here's the here's the thing, man. Now he's he's dipping his toe on the long side. Large caps are next, buddy. <laughs> Come to the dark side. Mm -hmm. Come to the... So, guys, it's line to line. And here's the second part of the equation. When James found out that this was a broken chart. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me actually pull up the chart he, I'm talking about. When he so he's putting on feelers and paying himself immediately until he sees the turn and then he gets more confident and then he adds size under, you know, a certain a VWAP point and he's following what's called trend down. At VWAP, we do two, I'm, I'm sorry, at MIC, we do two things. We play line to line and we follow trend. That's MIC process in a nutshell, man. Follow trend. <laughs> Buying breakouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit james i can't believe you long that dude congratulations man you're crazy you're fucking crazy james you may be the only trader i know man that uses the three um points of vwap i don't know many traders who do that man you use the three points combined with just a general vwap that's interesting he doesn't do it he just puts it on his chart to make it look cool james is just too lazy he's like dude i just honestly couldn't figure out how to take it off <laughs> That is probably very true. So what do you think, Joe? How do you want to answer what the MIC process is, man? I mean, there's a million more things I can say, but to keep it unbelievably simple is, bro, get a base hit. Don't be stupid. Don't fight trend. Take that base hit and rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat every single day, line to line. Like how much more simple can it get, right? Absolutely. And I never knew in the beginning, you know, two years ago, <coughs> When I was learning Bao's process, I didn't know um, really what he always, when he said, you know, just, I just go line to line. 
line to line. And I'm like, well, if it just keeps ripping your fucking dick off and going line to line, <laughs> what do you do? And, and so your explanation of, of uh, what was that last talk? S-I-O-U or something like that? S-something? Uh, S-I-O-X. So let's take a look at that. That's the one that had the really, yeah, there you go. Your first, your first trade is on the first line, right? Like, like Tosh says, like Bao says, like everybody says, here is line to line. So you start at the first line, you base your trade off of that first line, not the second line. And if you trade that first line, don't let it be FOMO. Don't let just, oh, I, mean, I got to get in because it's touching this line. But really, I would like this other line. Well, then don't get in at this line. Wait for the next line. And I've found that if, if for example, you, you continue to trade and you keep getting stopped out on these first lines that you always draw, then stop trading that first line and just wait for the second one. And then everybody's going to be like, well, you know, when it, you know, I miss seven trades and then I only get three. Yeah. But of those three, how many did you win? Well, I won two out of those three. Uh, that's pretty decent odds in my opinion. And I, and so that helps you improve drawing your lines and picking times when maybe you take, take a first line trade or maybe you only wait for a second line trade. For me, if I'm gonna wait for a second line type of trade, it's based on how much volume is trading during pre-market. Like if there's a crap load of volume and we're trading like 50-50 VWAP, like me and Tosh talk about, oh my God, there's probably been 14 webinars where we've talked about this little 50-50 VWAP more. phenomenon. <laughs> Do what? Uh, yeah, probably more. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It, it's all about how much volume is occurring in pre-market, how much, how, where it's trading relative to VWAP. And of course, has the float rotated during VWAP or during pre-market during VWAP? Duh. Um, all of those things matter because that is, you know, let's say the floats rotated. It's a smaller float, let's say like 3 million. The floats rotated already during pre-market, but it's kind of under VWAP, it's kind of 50-50, but I've got two lines. I've got one line here and one line, and then I get an outer line. I'm only gonna wait for that outer line because of the float rotation. I'm gonna choose the lower odds line and say, nope, delete. I'm not even gonna pay attention to this line. I'm gonna wait for an outer line and only trade that level. Yep. I love it. I love it. And here's the thing, guys. Outer, like, line to line and fantasy orders into that line doesn't necessarily mean you hit it on the way up. Like I said, what me and James do sometimes, if you are a little bit uncomfortable on the way up because you think it's just too strong, just wait for the top. Like, just wait for the turn and then hit it. And then you have defined risk. It, am I but don't let it reject that? seven cents and then whack it. You know, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's dude, not, not like what, <laughs> we're not that, talking that, about like that, this little that like doesn't work we're not talking about like, it, these like little it hits candles. It and it's like bink and then it rejects seven cents and you're like slam it and then you hit the bottom of that <laughs> yeah the last thing you want to do is throw some bullets after like a bb pellet <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> oh shit that's funny well you know it's true because some people are going to go do that they're gonna be like it rejected three cents i whacked it and then i got stopped out Yep, they're gonna be like, dude, it rejected three cents. Now sometimes that will be all it needs, but dude, just just let it let it reject hard, man. Let it reject yep. hard. There's yeah. always a pop, man. There's always a pop. Yep. Guys, ask your questions. Me and Joe are here to help you, man. Seriously. Yes, some questions. Would you man. scale into that four seventy eight pre market high? Me personally, if um had it not opened so low relative to VWAP, um, yes. Like if it opened 50-50 VWAP, I would have, uh, I mean, that, four thir that 425 area, that would have been like a, like a small starter for me. Like if we were opening at VWAP, I would have waited for there. Um, and my ultimate risk absolutely would have been pre-market highs. Joe, just because I, I was saying this earlier, I totally agree with you, bro. Say 
that this was like say it like this is there really like there like it's opening at four you like, know like whole dollar like stocks opening right here and say it gets up to this level bro i want it to get here and then reject because i can start hitting here yep yep see perfect yep so so i wouldn't be scaling this because because i don't like scaling wicks look at how much level there is of just wick i don't like yep. scaling that i don't i don't man I want it to reject and then I'll put in down there and then we can add under even the better is if it rejects because VWAP is going to chase it higher, right? You know, VWAP is going to go up as the price goes up at the open. And so a worst case scenario, you let it hit pre-market highs. And then if it, my favorite is when it hits pre-market highs and it goes like three cents over it and then it just slams and i'm like oh yeah every long just got trapped like Here we this go. joe like that oh yeah it's like eh. bro it's that done. is that is the holy grail to get in on the next pop and usually yep. bro, the next pop is very small <laughs> oh yeah it, it's like it, it that's my favorite like if you were to wait for this trade only um that's you know that's <clears throat> that's fine but in these markets like now like right now the longs market is kind of drying up a little bit um shorts have been you know having decent days over the last oh, man, couple they've weeks been, they've been getting bailed out of everything bro yeah absolutely and longs you know that it's kind of rotated <coughs> shorts have longer markets than longs do in small caps just it's for y'all's reference i completely agree I, I, I've talked about this with Austin, me and Todd, Tosh has talked about it several times, but you got to know what market cycle that you're in and always know that a long market cycle, like a long side market cycle in small caps is always short lived. They're short lived are so powerful. Yes. And it, but trend will overcome those little cycles and then shorts gain control again. And so you just have to kind of know where you're at within that cycle. And that's what, that's what Austin's webinars are great for. Like if you're not attending those every Thursday, you're just, you're an imbecile. I'm just going to say <laughs> you're an imbecile because he gives market sentiment right there. And the guy is very good at reading market sentiment. Very good at it. So fifth, like AMD, AEMD. What is that? Don't know what that means, you know. Yeah, Zah. Yeah, they are short lived, but I mean, if you don't adapt fast, you will get murdered. Bro, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We can we can even say it like this, Joe. They're short lived, dude, but they're so they're powerful enough that in that short time frame, your career could be over if you have no risk management. Oh, absolutely. You're gonna be living life like Ted Nugent, hard and fast. <laughs> Did and so then you're dead. Like hard and fast. <laughs> <laughs> what does that say? Sith like a what? What is this? A Star Wars reference? Sith like AMD Sith, Sith Lord. <laughs> yeah. I, I am so confused, bro. Yeah, I don't know what that is. You know what the hell you mean? So on. Suspense. On AEMD, let's talk about AEMD really fast because I think this can trip up a lot of people because we don't normally trade pre-market on the short side. And didn't that stuff during pre-market? Dude, right during it. And guys, I've given webinars on this. What do you yeah. think? Uh, my favorite death candle, one of my top three favorite death candles in the world, dude, is the candle right before the open. It's an assurity that you will get a leg down after this. It's an assurity. Every single long from here into here with almost 100% assurity, dude, are so underwater that by the time the market opens where most of the world can now trade, oh my God, dude, the selling pressure is immediate. Yep. And Nothing even if you miss that trading. candle, yeah. <clears throat> let's say you don't like that candle. You know, let's say that that candle like stuffs really hard, but it doesn't have enough volume because when you look at it from now, it looks like it's not a lot of volume. But when you look at it during pre-market and only pre-market volume, it's the second highest volume candle. Guys, so it's a relative. Look at relative to pre-market. Exactly. Yeah. 
now at the open let's wow. say you are like you're waiting for the pop what other setup do you guys see here what other setup is staring you right in the face at what is that 260 line what's staring you right in the face at the 260 line here i'll just draw it for you guys hold on one sec just so you guys can get a visual representation it's Come a death up. line absolutely quiz it's time guys quiz time there you go it's a death line. And so if you miss that pop over there, you still have an opportunity to make money. You still have an opportunity to make money on this trade. There's no reason to have FOMO or anything like that. Oh, damn it. I didn't get the top. Oh, crap. Just wait for that move, man. Wasn't like a year ago, Alex grew that E-Trade account where he was like just shorting death lines. And he did like a hundred grand in like two or three months, something like that. And basically when the death line happened, he was just slamming it. Yep. I remember. And, and because everybody is, dude, death line is my absolute favorite setup for small caps because it's dummy proof. It's, you don't have to be an expert at tape reading. You don't have to be an expert at stopping out and re-entering. You don't have to be an expert at anything, but really drawing a line and being patient and having discipline. All you have to do is just sit here and wait for that setup and that's it. And this chart right here, having that one singular dip during pre-market, that's what you wanna see. So if you're somebody where you're like, well, I don't wanna locate it before I know it's a death line. Well, you know, welcome to the fucking business. That's how, what you're gonna have to do, but, um, if you only looked for this setup, if I had a small account and I was trading small caps <coughs> at trade zero or something like that, I would look for this setup on AEMD, not, not at, not anything, just pre-market. I would just be looking at this during pre-market. You see kind of how that just is that big U shape and there's that one formed support. That's it. Like if the chart looks like that, locate the shares and wait for the death line. If it never comes, fuck it. It never comes. Well, and Otherwise, guys, like, just wait. The, the thing that I want to point out here, and, and let me make sure I draw it, is I'll point it out visually and then I'm going to quiz you. What do you see for a perfect death line setup? What do you see on here? There's but, like, okay, oh, do oh, this really quick for me. Come down. Meat. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. So leave that Bingo. circle. Leave that circle and now draw a circle from the yellow line to VWAP. Oh, okay. Your Sorry, yellow no. line One up sec. to VWAP. You One know what sec. I'm talking about? Yep, yep, you know yep. what I'm saying. One sec. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's a fucking snowman with a big fat ass. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, it, like, baby got back. Look at this thing. There you go. <laughs> 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 look at the snowman, bro. Look for the snowman. The snowman <laughs> is, is the death oh, line okay, signature, lame. bro. This look is not for the a dick. Snowman. It's just his foot. <laughs> <laughs> now it's looking like a penguin, but okay. <laughs> bro, who's the man? Who's the freaking artist, bro? <laughs> With look at you. Line. Like a Picasso over here. Dude, let me tell you something. This is the death line, baby. This is the Christmas death line jingle bell pattern. <laughs> My son's sitting here looking at this, and he's like, it's a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, see, Dad, I totally get it. <laughs> anyway, so, it, I mean, this, this chart on AEMD is, this is exactly what I would be looking for if I was a short seller in small caps, I didn't have a big account, or I didn't have a lot of experience. This would be what I would be waiting for. Oh, yeah. Just looking for that pre-market setup. And as soon as I see that set up in pre-market, I'm going to locate the shares. And you're probably going to see it about 30 minutes before the open. But you need to be there for the entire time, okay? Because sometimes, sometimes, oh, shit. Well, I just burnt the living crap out of this mac and cheese. Whoops. Oh, I'm glad you didn't um, see your son, dude. I was like, <laughs> No. So um, if you just... I didn't burn it. It was just heated. It was just warming for a very long time. <laughs> um, so if you just, if you locate early, 
like this is what James was really good at. And he would always, always beat me on the locates. He would always get it, you know, five minutes before I did. <laughs> and, and he would get it for five or six cents cheaper. And I'm like, ah, oh, you son of a bitch. Yeah, man. what are you doing? Giving Chad foot rubs over at Cobra? What the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, how do I get that hook up? <laughs> Bro, for real. I'm like, God dang. I, did, I called Chad today. I called Chris. I need, I need the James hookup. Give me that James Freelander hookup. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got this innate ability for getting the locates at the right time. So. By the way, guys, we have literally no special hookups being mentors. Like, I, I dude, I'll just... I'm going to say it as bluntly as I can. Bal, Alec, myself, Joe, James, dude, I don't care if you think we do. We have no special perks outside of what you guys get offered. We do not accept secret shares or any of that bullshit like our competitors do because I could say some shit. I, I can't, but I could. Maybe get me drunk one day at a meetup or something, even though I don't drink. But um, let me tell you. Getting man, drunk on green tea. Getting drunk on freaking green tea. There are <laughs> many, there are many people that flub the locate services out there, we do not fuck around with that at Cobra, bro. Alex Bell and myself have the same access that you guys do at the same time frame. We do not get special benefits. Bow has reiterated this time and time again, and we like to make an example of what should be done with integrity in this industry. And like I said, I can tell you who gets special treatment. I can tell you, and they're not at Cobra, they're with others. And that's why we don't rep those brokers because they do shit shady but I'm not going to get into Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Absolutely. So do you ever not chase a setup like this? Well, Yeti, if there's no death line, then yeah, there's your answer. I would not chase a setup like this if there's not a death line. Like, let's say like, it's like, <clears throat> it's like higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, all in pre-market. It's like a shitload of higher lows. And in those cases, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Like, let's say, like, can you see, like, let's say, like, pre-market looked like this. Let me also draw that 260 line again. Yeah. Let's say that, um, let's say it was, like, that was your pre-market chart, okay? Like, you've got it all the way down here, and then at the market open, it stuffs like this. So, I'm like, okay, that's the death line, but like, that's way far down there. Like that's so far down there. And then I'm going to be sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And then, you know, finally at 3 PM, it's like, Ugh, and then fades four cents. It's, it's just not worth your time. So this is what I'm talking about with this. Um, oops. Why did I, I didn't mean to save that to my photos, but I did. Um, <laughs> like this is, I mean, this is this setup right here. That would be what I would be looking for is this one single support, that one single support during pre-market. And I'm just, I'm just waiting like a sniper in the, in the, in the, in the grass. I'm just Hell sitting yeah. there waiting. I'm just waiting for that deer to poke its head out of the timber. And I'm just like, boom, done. With the BB gun, the pellet gun. Dead <laughs> Bambi right there. Dead yeah, Bambi. Bambi. Damn, you are a Texan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's some cold shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Joe's got Bambi on the brisket cooker. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a chicken. Oh, shit. I forgot to check. <laughs> Spoken like a true. <laughs> Holy shit. <sighs> Oh, okay, we still got some time. Joe, nice. you are crazy, man. You are crazy, bro. Well, so we meal prep. Like, we meal prep for the week because it's a lot easier for me to just, like, warm up, a, like, a meal for the kids or something. Oh, dude, if you have kids, and my kids meal prep for sure. My kids love barbecue, so that's easy for me. And so what we do is we'll just smoke, like, ribs or chicken or, you know, we'll smoke one or two things on the weekend, and then during the week we eat it. And sometimes it's not smoked something. Sometimes it's, you know, like a casserole or some shit like that yeah, or, yeah. or some kind of big dish. But, you know, it's, it's, that's what we do is we don't, you know, we don't like, I don't health, healthily meal prep. I, uh, I just meal prep. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I eat food based on taste. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and generally the better it tastes, the sooner you're going to die. 
and <laughs> sooner joe's gonna eat it <laughs> I, bro that, i'm for real i'm like dude yeah james like james 100 percent. me and alex and james have all three agreed on this life's too short eat a fucking steak dude and not just like, that let me <laughs> let me let me make something very clear man because i've studied health my whole <laughs> life like to the point of like obsession right let me tell you right man, stress will kill you faster than any food in existence dude live bro your preach preach live your life dude why do you think we don't swing huge p l stress will kill you faster than you can even enjoy the money absolutely bro live your life the way you want to live it just don't harm people <laughs> don't scam so people. yeah for real so let's look at uh, this is a really good example of of for people that are wondering you know do large caps obey the same type of lines that small caps do um let's look at uh Let's look at JD today. Wait, Joe, what was the question? I'm sorry, man. I'm a visual learner. I didn't even hear shit of that. What? <laughs> so it, earlier, that guy that asked, you know, what's the MIC process? And you're like, well, let's look at it from like a large cap standpoint. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So <clears throat> do you want pivots on here, Joe? Because I can put them on. Do what? Yeah, put to... pivots on there. That way yeah. that you can see it. Yeah, it's very, you need them really. Gotcha, buddy. Uh, it helps clear things up in big caps. Now zoom out to a, like a, like a one year daily chart. Let's go to the one year. Yep. And now if you just look at, you know, your levels and you draw your lines, just draw a line at 80. And guys, I'm just doing basic technical analysis. I'm Here, not, I'll take I'm off not, the pivots for the daily chart. I'll take off the one Yeah. Time. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to mess with that. There you go. And just dump on a line there at 80. And then um, that's, you know, that's fine. That's good. So <laughs> all I'm looking at is I'm seeing that 80 is a potential level. How did I find JD? Why did I find JD? Well, for those of you that have not been paying attention to large caps, it's fine. It's cool. But um, Baidu, B-I-D-U, had like blowout news yesterday. And it screamed, screamed higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. So JD is almost always in sympathy to Baidu. So it's just kind of knowing these characteristics. So JD, I was like, all right, let me find, let me find some support here. Well, I got an 80 line. I see an 80 line. Now let me jump on the intraday. So go to the intraday now. Let's take a look. Once you get your lines on the daily, man, then you got to rush into intraday and be like, where do I need to get in? What do I like? So I, dude, I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, I'm going line to line. Now for everyone to reference here, what is another line that you see here, whole or half dollar and yesterday and the day before is a very clear indication of this line. I just want to see what everybody's answers are. Yeah, so What's I. another line here that's whole or half dollar? I know Tosh already sees it, but oh, I want you guys. Here, here. I'm sorry, I'll put on pivots on the intraday because this is where you want pivots. So now that we have the intraday pivots, Remember that 80 line though. Remember that support on the daily. Remember this. I'll make it like pretty big. Yep. All right. So 80, 50. No, not, 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 not 81. You guys are going higher. Why are you looking higher? Look lower. We're long lower. biased here. We're lower, long lower, biased lower. here. Bingo, Tony. Got it. Bingo. Got it. 79, 79 line. What is also at or near 79? What's near 79? Do you see that pivot point right near 79? Couple that green factors. line? Pivot. Holla. So now you know. You have two lines to scale. Okay, you go line to line. The first attempt is going to be 80. And you're probably going to be looking at the midpoint or the purple line. Okay? You're going to be looking at that purple line. You're going to be starting at 80 with the mentality that you could scale it down to there. And if it loses that level, you got to cut it and then wait for 79. Okay. First one you lose. Second one, you wait for it. Okay, cool. Now it doesn't work <clears throat> off of, you know, like it doesn't work if you were going to wait for those lower levels. So you got to take the, you got to take the chance and trust your lines. Worst case scenario is you stop out and you get a much better entry on the long side anyway. So yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was That's just going to pull that up. I was oh my just God. <laughs> I'm dead, dude. I was funny. just thinking of that. <laughs> Pivot! 
Pivot! <laughs> Bro, the best is when he returns the couch and he's like, my couch is cut in half. And she's like, well, I'll give you store credit of $5. He's like, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Fuck it. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember so, that show, dude, from my childhood, like, crazy. I got, <laughs> I have such a, like, a visual memory, man, that I just remember all that stuff, dude. So That's this crazy. is like, this is like a, my favorite setup uh, to just trade lines. And there's nothing really particular about it. Um, but it's, you know, when it jams all the way to 81 at the open, like zoom in on the open. Real quick. Real quick. And look what happens. You know, it jams to 81 right out of the gate. And so right out of the gate, you're like, damn, missed the move. It's not going to dip to my line. It was a pivot. Ah. So what do you do? Most people are going to chase it and they're going to get stopped out. And so <clears throat> this is a great example of, dude, it's just, it's either your lines or no trade. It's your line or no trade. Line or no trade. That's it. There's no in between. There is no in between. The thing I love about this, Joe, is what a perfect example. So let me, let me kind of like, like, let's run through it again, man, seriously. So let's go back to the daily chart. And for um, what it's worth, I am long from 80. <laughs> <laughs> still. So guys, still look, at, look, at, look at how simple Joe just made his thought process for this. He found a consolidation zone and linked it up with a hole in half dollar mark that has been bounced off. Bounce off, yep. bounce off, bounce off, bounce off. And now it's dipping towards for a long time. And when you have a stock that is either really high and finally hitting resistance, it's, a it's winded, it's tired. This is almost so oversold that when it gets to a consolidation point or a support on the daily, it has a good chance of bouncing off because it's already been down for a week, right? This is a huge yep. flooring, man. So when we come into the, again, this is just a quick review, when we come into the intraday, man, and this is where you add things like, like pivots, let me do it again. I know, hopefully I'm not confusing you guys a lot. But when you come in with pivots, Joe is like, dude, oops, sorry. I went out a little too much. One sec. I went out just a tad too much. When you have this area, this major consolidation point, and it's really 80, you know you're going to give yourself $2 of risk, man, because what's the upside potential? So you are going, and I'll draw it out. I'm going to make this as clear as possible. When you have the line 80, if you can get that, it is along anywhere from 80 to 79 because now you are scaling two to three pivot points and two whole dollar numbers exactly where that consolidation area is on the daily. Dude, plus, plus, you have... And you just... Be quick, here, dude. be quick to cut the ones that go lower, bro. Like be quick to cut the ones that don't hold your line. And if it reclaims your line, jump right back in. And if you're under PDT and you can't do that, then you're going to have to decrease your size and widen your stops to give yeah. your lines room to work. And if you have, look, here's the thing. This is the thing about outer lines or pass at MIC. If you did wait for the 79 resistant or the support guys, you are going to miss the day trade today. And this is why we say there are ways to, there's so many different ways to trade. There, you can go really big size and it, thanks, man. Thanks, Tony. You can go really big size or your normal size, whatever full size, whatever that is for you and cut with tight risk or you can size down and weather this big of a move and give yourself better odds of success. Because yep. this is the level from here to here, Joe's not wrong, dude. Look at where it bounced off for the last two days. This is the floor. So within this area is technically the scale zone. So you can, like I said, man, say 5,000 shares is your maximum size. Say you get 5,000 right here, but you got to cut it, dude, if it's going to like 79.69. Or you go- <laughs> Oh, faster, dude, yeah. Faster, it, it, the moment faster. it goes below 80, I mean, 10 cents below 80, you got to cut 5K shares. Dude, I mean, that's 500 bucks. Now. Like you're, Exactly. But, you know, if you're right, super fast then it's you know you're going to be right for a lot of money very quickly but if your lines correct. are correct then and this is just my own personal rule is i just base it kind of on the stock price so like like a small cap you know if the line breaks by 20 cents that's like a true break to me on a big cap going back going back joe we're going back one sec going back 
335 to 289. That's a big yeah. break in small caps. Bro. Yeah, that's a freaking break. And even if you're like a long, like a 20 cent stuff under VWAP, you know, that that's a break. That's a really, like, that's a break. There's no discretion to it. That's a break. Like, if you're long at VWAP and you're now down 20 cents on a thousand shares and you were just up 60 cents, I mean, your asshole is so tight you can make diamonds out of coal. I, I'm like, it. so you've got to realize that it's all relative, okay, but it translates all into the same markets. All in, sorry, not same markets, different markets. So if your risk on a level is 20 cents in small caps on a $3 stock, $4 stock, in a big cap that's you know 80 to 90 to 50 or something like that, then you increase it and you say, okay, if it breaks by 50 cents, 60 cents, a dollar, now it's a real break. Okay, now I'm gonna go from there. And I mean, at, at 80, where does it dip to like 79.90? I mean, not that much. And so that's not a break. That's just volatility is going to wick it down below the line a little bit, which is fine. Just gives you a better opportunity to get a better fill. Guys, this is the beauty. This is line to line. This is MIC. Yeah, Pro. it's just it all, is- all we're doing. The whole point to this was just, I'm just going line to line. I'm just going, okay, 80 line. All right, let's give it a go. Here we go. 80. Boop. Did it work? Okay, no, it didn't work. Okay, next line, 79. Okay, 79 line. Did it work? No, it didn't. All right, okay, fuck it. I'm done. <laughs> Yo, this <laughs> webinar was, dude, this webinar is so good. I almost like have to delete the recording, dude. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> you gave away so much. <laughs> Damn it, dude. New oh. members should also see ANCN was up 200% yesterday, died, gap down. No one cared about it today. <laughs> they had 70 cent range, low hanging fruit. ANCN, I just didn't like today. I don't like stuff. Oh, like man. I know. I, I I like it when it gets up to this this purple line, man. This is the pivot line I wanted. I don't like this little pop shit. You can make what money. Did, it. What did Tom say on his watch list? Tom loves these little hangers. Like I know this Tom stuff. lives for these, man. Let's see what he yeah, said. Yeah, what did he say? He posted one this morning, and I saw Alex mention it. It's above maybe, mine maybe and his. He should, maybe he is. A little it? higher. Oh, there More he is. For B-Wells. ANCN, not even on his list. Yeah, because wow. it just, it just. It, it, I what think was B Wells? What did B Wells say? What did B want? B, B Wells looks at that stuff sometimes. He, nah, nope. he was BCN. I think he wow, was ANCN wasn't even on anybody's watch. Dude, Interesting. Definitely wasn't on mine, man. When you have something this beaten down, dude. Here, here's the thing. Here's the. You guys want a trick, dude? This is this is how you know you've been trading for so long. Here's a trick for you guys. <laughs> dude, this is a really good trick. It's actually a lazy ass trick. So, <laughs> Joe, you're gonna get a kick out of this, dude. You know why I don't have these on my watch list? The most beaten down ones, because I don't want it unless it gets to like a 380 line, right? Which is extremely big. The only way it's gonna get to a 380 line is if a pumper gets involved. So I will know by chat commentary if this is moving based on. Oh, pumper. yeah. So, dude, I don't even yeah. put this on my screens to save screen real estate. I will just look at it because I know if a pumper gets in and stay alert, it's finally at my lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's your yeah. trap. <laughs> That's how That's you know good, you've been trading too long. Yeah. Well, it's on something like this, you know, you ju- we've just been burned one too many times when you're like all right let me hit this and it you know and then it rips your face off because you started way too soon or something like that so i mean it i can totally understand why tosh doesn't want to hit something like this me personally i would have been waiting for that same 360 380 line like that would have been i'd have been like all right 360 or 380 let's go well guys maybe yeah joe where's Where's the, where's the most of the, where's most of the volume stuck right here? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Dude. So, yep. so, so again, guys, like I don't want to focus on A N C N. Now I would have focused the hell on it uh, uh, today if it, if it closed at 370, but because it was so yeah. down, I was like, all right, someone will alert it a pumper. And if a pumper is involved, then it'll finally be at my level because I don't want to miss this dude. Dude. What I want, I what I want to do is like, I and I just haven't done it yet and I could do it and I might do it for everybody is um, on the, like the pivot points, go inside the code 
and add alerts that way that if price touches a pivot point on this, then you get an alert on your thinkorswim. And so what you would do is you would have like these low hangers like off to the side. And if it touches the midpoint or R1, it gives you an alert that way that, you know, you can go look at it if it does that. And that way that you don't get the way you don't pay so close attention to these things that don't move. I do nailed it, Joe. Nailed it. Cause that's what I do with like other stuff, but I just do like manual alerts. Like I just put like a manual alert where it's just like, okay, if it goes above 340, tell me, okay, it's above 340. All right. Time to find some shares. <laughs> so it's like, or other, you know, it's just, it's just so beaten down that it just might, just might not be worth it. So. Dude, I dig it. Because you want, you want bigger price moves. You know, I don't want to just like, if I'm under PDT, I want to, I don't want to go find like 10 or 20 cents. And then like, that's all I get for the day. Like I want better opportunities. Um, so I'm going to be looking for those things that can pay me 30, 50, 60, 75, a dollar. You know, that, that's what I want to look for at, if I were under PDT. Dude, absolutely, man. When you're under PDT, man, you got to be really selective, man. You got to hit what you are really, really sure about or what you're at least for the most part, man, when you're still finding your again, what you're really comfortable with, man, that it's, yeah. it boils down to comfort level first. When you're finding and if I was under PDC, man. bro, and wanted to short sell like this AEMD chart, holy shit, Batman! I mean, this couldn't get more perfect. This <laughs> couldn't get more perfect. That that singular support and pre market, print this freaking chart, paste it on your face, tattoo oh, yeah. it on your ass. I mean, whatever you do to remember this chart, this is how it should look. And if you want to short sell under PDT, this is this is what you need to wait for. This is your tramp stamp, man. You put this. Yeah, right on that's there. it. That is it. That is it. What do you think, Joe? Should we wrap it up, man? I think we've given enough free stuff away, and you got to get to chicken. Yeah, I think we're good. I think Joe's we're good. Got, Anybody else? Last questions? Anything? Joe's got some Texas beer chicken cooking, man, or something. <laughs> <laughs> no man there's this barbecue place here in here in dallas that there's smoked chicken funny enough this barbecue place is known for their smoked chicken not even the like the beef or anything like that it's smoked chicken that they're known for and oh, i i swear it is the best freaking smoked chicken i've ever had in my life dude and it's so delicious um, and it's a place called if I mean, if anybody here in Dallas, it's a place called slow bone. Um, <clears throat> and it's the smoked chicken is amazing. And so what I'm what I'm doing is I'm trying to I'm trying to emulate their the rub that they do. It's like it's a really good rub. And I'm trying to well, you're talking about out. slow bones and rubs, man. Are we talking about food? <laughs> Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Food that you want to rub all over your body. Oh, holy shit. Oh man. I thought you were I talking mean, about just... like a like a massage parlor or something, bro. Slow bone and a nice rub. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> I was like, where does chicken fit in all this? But I mean it's you know, it, it you know, you rub the you know, you rub it all on the breast. You know, you want to make <laughs> sure the skin is not. Yeah, I could. We could go into this, but now, this I mean, is something I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Tosh would be proud of me. I actually planted my own garden in my backyard. Bro, get out! Come on. Really? Yeah. I don't know why I haven't sent you a picture. I I sent Alex all the pictures of it, and I was like, look at this shit. I don't know why I didn't send it to you. Dude, You're the first dude, person I should have fucking thought of. No, I usually COVID. just. I usually just send that stuff to uh, to Alex because I'm like, hey, look at the vegetables. And he's like, ew. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he, just, he just messages you a bunch of crunch butter and he's like, I'm I know, a right? <laughs> He's like, ew. And so, yeah. Ew, it's so gross. Oh and, uh, but no, I don't know why I didn't send it. Dude, I built a portable garden. So like I put it on my back pound, I put it on my back deck when it's nice and sunny, you know, now that it's kind of freezing, I have to bring it inside. 
but like I put it outside every day and I bring it inside every night and uh, it's a portable garden. It's got, you know, lettuce, cilantro, uh, some herbs in there and uh, some other stuff. And, and then I did tomato plants and all kinds of other stuff, but you know, it's been like this. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Well, that is awesome. You would be proud. You would be proud. I am but proud. But dude, I had this. I am proud. I, yes. I had this, um, this, these, so like we, we put down a bunch of grass in our front yard. And so the, I had one of these pallets left over, those wooden pallets. And um, I was like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? And so I just pulled all the boards apart and I made a big box out of it. And, and, uh, and then I, I put it, I put uh, potting mix, topsoil, bunch of compost stuff in there, mixed it all together. Oh, I've got elephant garlic growing right now Dude. and green onions. Um, and then I got a red onion that I forgot to cook and it just kind of sprouted in my cabinet. And, uh, and so I just planted that, yeah. Wait, so Joe, if we say farmer just bought XYZ, are we talking about you now? Or are we talking about the pump? Bro, I'm saying <laughs> Farmer Joe. <laughs> like, what are we talking Joe about, man? Yeah, I'm gonna be like, Yeah, I need some of this in my dish. Yeah, just go out in the garden and pick it. <laughs> Get out in the garden. <laughs> Get out in the garden and pick it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this has been too much fun, man. I can't. Me and Alex were like, we were like, forget the garden, bro. We want a, we want a cow. Like, I want one cow. That's all I want. I want. I told, I, I told Alex, man, if he brings a cow into his New Jersey home, he's truly sick in the head. I warned him, like, bro, if you bring <laughs> livestock into your, in your freaking, and and then butcher it one day, you are sick in the head, bro. Bro, I told him, I was like, I'll buy a ranch with you. Let's go. I was oh like, I'll buy a ranch with you and we'll, you know, we'll get some cattle out there and we'll get them going. We'll get some livestock going and, and you know, that, that's it. You guys are sick, man. You guys are sick. I'm telling <laughs> you. I'm telling you, dude, James will be the ranch hand there too, man. Y'all steak lovers. Bro, see, I'm like, yeah, Val, oh, man. I, I'm, bro, I'm, I'm like, Val. I'm a seafood connoisseur, man. Like if I go to like a steakhouse, bro, I want the seafood tower. <laughs> bro, I love seafood too. Don't get me wrong. Is, I love seafood too. I, dude, anything like any kind of meats, I'm pretty much in. Bro, oh, I just in food. It, God is good, and food is better. <laughs> dude, Absolutely. Food. What just, did so, you also plant any weed? No, I did not. That's not legal here yet. <laughs> I wonder if it's you legal can't do that, weed, dude. I'm so straight edge. I don't smoke. I don't drink, man. I just freaking meditate and freaking trade stocks. Dude, what I haven't. Mean? I haven't smoked in eight. Oh, God. Dude, that'd be Joe and Alex. What are you talking about? I ain't getting on no ranch. Not with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's Aloha Trader's uh, theme song every single time he does the webinar or trades in the morning. <laughs> he laid oh, yeah. that gemstone on us recently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. All right, dude. What's the next meetup? What's that? Are we all just gonna go get? Are we all just gonna get COVID vaccines together and then go to a meetup or something? Dude, what is you, this? You couldn't pay me to get a vaccine, man. I don't trust that <laughs> stuff, man. You could, <laughs> bro. I wouldn't take a vaccine for a hundred grand. It's too. Would, it, it was. It was pushed through too fast, you know. Well, I will live in my house the next ten years if I have to to avoid human. I ain't taking no fucking vaccine, bro. Yeah. That, there, there are so much many conspiracy theories on what's in those things, man, and control and all that stuff. I would ne <laughs> give you two heads five years from now. <laughs> well, let me tell you yeah, something. Yeah, that, that was – I have my own personal reasons, and I asked a question on the Large Cap channel earlier today. I was like, you know, what is what is everybody else's reasoning? What's the reasoning be behind not, not having – not taking the vaccine? And I was like, I'm not trying to start a political debate or anything like that. It's just a general question. And because my own personal thing is, you know, I'm not going to take a vaccine – on the first run, you know, that's never been, Definitely that hasn't not. been tested. For, and, for a know, virus, it, we still don't know that much. Yeah, data. there's not well, enough, there's not enough data, but by God, we're about to collect enough data. That's for sure. I mean, bro, we're doing me, a worldwide fucking clinical trial right now. Well, let me tell you something. Like everything else, 
I don't judge people. I let people live the way they want, man. I really do. I will just voice yeah. my opinion on what I'm comfortable with. That's the only thing. I will not take a vaccine if you pay me. If 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 it's totally legit and people like it and stuff, bro, that's that's on you. That's up to you. Do what you got to do. And bro, really you care. need but you need people to take it in order to know the real efficacy ratings. So it's like a, it, it's you know it, it's it's up to you and your own personal choices. And that's why I'm like, I don't think people should be judged for taking the vaccine Not because if all, they're yeah. willing to take that risk, Oh, 100%. And take it, go for it. Absolutely. Well, it, go for it, it. It's like, it's like politics and everything. It's like, dude, literally do you, man? Like, I don't mind. It's just, I'm going to tell you how I do me. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I'm like, I'm just not, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go do that. I, because there's just too much risk involved. And that's my own personal, th oh my God. I know, was, was that loud, loud, dude? I tried to turn it down if that helped wow. at all. Shit, man. <laughs> I was like, I was like, shit, that bell's coming, dude. It, wow. it deafens me every day. <laughs> Woo. There's no way to turn it down. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> no, you're good, bro. It's now good. you got to take an ear vaccine. <laughs> Yeah, I need an ear vaccine. I'm All right, guys, do dude. This, I'm going to do one of those candles. This has been <laughs> – exactly. Dude, this has been fun as hell. Remember, live in integrity. Don't judge your fellow man. Just do right by you, man, and just don't compare yourself to others, man. That's the, that's the one thing I tried to impart wisdom today is just, just be the best version of you, man. We will see you next week. Joe, love you, bro. Catch you next week, man. And these webinars are more fun than – dude, we have so much fun doing these, man. I can't wait till next week. Later, bro. Later, guys. See ya.